All right, so I have most of the playable vampires in this deck. Um, you have a couple of pirate vampire synergies in the Fane here, where it creates extra tokens, and then Sanctum Seeker, which drains your opponent out, which is a sweet point card that like swings health totals and also also helps us have a little bit of reach. Twilight Prophet generates card advantage. I think this deck could probably hit um, this card. This deck will probably hit the. City's Blessing fairly often, awesome, especially things like Legion Landing making two permanents. There's a chance that this deck just, like, wants some History of Benalia, even though it's not on theme just because it's a powerful white card in the format. One kind of cute card we've got a couple copies of is Squire's Devotion, which is also another card that helps us enable the City's Blessing since it uh, since it put two, two permanents into play. This card's actually really sweet with Adanto Vanguard. If you curve Adanto Vanguard into this, the Adanto Vanguard attacks as a 4-2 with lifelink, so you can activate it every turn and just, like, get the life back immediately, which is awesome. So, uh, we've got just, like, good black-white cards on the sideboard. We've got Duresses, Takatli Honor Guards, Bloodfast Moments, etc. So this was a build-around submission for black-white vampires. Let's, uh, dive into some matches and see how it goes. I think there's a Poison Tip Judy deck in my queue at some point. This hand is awesome. Good, good, solid curve here. Just like one, two, three, and then a removal spell at the top. <clears throat> if we if we do curve fully out, we got a Sanctum Seeker now too. Walker, yep. Legion landing is kind of embarrassing in matchups like this if you don't flip it right away. Hitting the fourth land means we get to curve right out of Sanctum Seeker, which is nice. Oh, he is a vampire knight. Huh. That might be something worth looking into, like how many actual how many actual vampire knights are there in the format? I don't I don't think we're dead. I don't think we're dead by any means. Like one of the reasons why these type of like this isn't a mono red deck that's trying to cheese people out. Like we've got some staying power and some bigger creatures in our deck that can like pound through them gaining some life. Mervin Fane, Vampires, based on 15th century Spain. Mar Marvin Fane, Vampires, based on 15th century Spain. Marvin Fane. Do, 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 do. Is that what you wanted? We good? Did I get there? We got close? I didn't, you should have put, you should have put the tune at the start. I like started reading it and then noticed that you put the tune at the end. I was off, I was off kilter. Alendra is also a vampire knight. If they have black source, if they have black source plus Vraska's contempt, we're going to be a little bit sad. Yeah, Danto. This is a matchup where the Adanto Vanguards are probably going to come out for Takatli. The card leaves a bit to be desired here for sure. 14 different Vampire Knights in standard? Huh. That could be a fun direction to take the deck. Let's play a couple like it is, and then maybe we'll we'll, we'll rebuild it after. The Lord's a Knight too. That's awesome. I say this attack is super aggressive. I 
So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna flip this bad boy over. They take six, we gain six. Vampire Nighthawk. <laughs> it's punny because it's on topic. Thanks everyone for hanging out today, by the way. Hope everyone's having a good Friday and a good start to your weekend. It's a little bit later than I normally run it, but running some long days since standards have been so great lately. Right, Blood Operative plus a couple copies of Doom Whispers and Black White Vampires. Operative is a cool enabler for a Danto. That's neat. Do you have another Explorer creature? They have another Explorer creature. They probably keep this Wild Growth Walker, but... Oh, no. <sighs> Why does Vraska hate the Adanto? The eternal question. Come on. Come at me, Hydra Increases. Ex exile removal is cheating. Yeah. yeah. I'm probably going to cut both these cards in this matchup. That is a vampire knight. Look at that. It's on a horse and everything. This is its horse. Its horse is amazing. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, huh. Yeah, this is this is a good chug. So the uncommon lords, the Merfolk Lord, the Vampire Lord, and I think there's one other, they all have the same animation in slightly different colors. Yeah, they have to. I think they gotta get rid of Seeker. I think they need to take the Adanto Vanguard off the table. Wow, no, res no respect for Sanctum Seeker, huh? No, no respect for Sanctum, Sanctum Seeker. All right, trade Z's. They go to 12, I go to 21. The problem here is I am basically at empty at this point. I do have, it's like I have my Adonto on the top of our deck versus the top of their deck, but like the top of their deck on average is going to be a lot better than the top of our deck because their deck has like Crisis in it. Think they can attack i like attacking with one of these they definitely can't afford to attack with both the sanctum seeker coming down the backswing is too good Ooh, that's a good one do i want to offer to trade this for both of these i don't think so <laughs> don't don't, uh, this is a crisis, isn't it? They're counting their mana. The splash for crisis going on, Muddy Python. Thanks for the four months, I appreciate it. Welcome back. Thanks for shipping me your Bezo Bucks again. We are on the feed finality plan at this point. Like every creature deck in a matchup like this. You can find the deck list on your screen. All right, say so exclamation point deck in chat as well to get a direct link to the deck list.
the good news is all of these Adanto first port tokens are going to end up attacking four. They're going to end up gaining us three when they attack, so that's nice. Yeah, Vanifier's fine and standard. We played Teamer and Vanifier, and they both felt pretty reasonable. I think next turn's probably going to be the swing turn. We're hoping they miss, like... We're hoping they don't have, like, Chupacabra here. I think next turn's going to be, like... We're going to make a token, like, A space smash face. See if you're worthy. Please find poop. I assume that means we're dead. It's 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 some kind of poop. It's poopy. Wow, they really just don't care about the Sanctum Seeker. The Sanctum Seeker is basically a lord that doesn't have to connect. So let's draw one of our three removal spells that are left. Who's got two thumbs and four Tikaliana guard in their sideboard? This guy right here. I just wanted to put triggers on the stack, Chad, okay? I under I understand that we're dead. I just I just wanted to put triggers on the stack. Probably want to cut Dusk Legion Zealot. We want the extra mortifies. We playing pre-cons to Mythic now. <laughs> uh, do I want Argos Bloodfast? I think I'm supposed to keep Vanguard in. I think Vanguard's worse than this if I'm bringing in Takatli. Like, and Vanguard, like, can attack. And we have extra health to power up Vanguard in this deck because we have so many things that gain life. I think I, think I keep Vanguard in. in there. I think I think I want to try and build a vampire knights configuration. Having having I did not realize that history of Finalia was or i didn't realize so many of these were knights until we started playing and i think that might be a good direction to take it and like lean into like four twilight prophets people are talking about like someone asked do we have card draw and i think i said no but this card does actually draw cards which is which is interesting and like history banality is another way to like enable enable the city's blessing as well this curve is really good on the play we get to go to go two, three, four, right on up. Well, this build, this was originally a build around, so I kind of looked through, I looked over all the different vampires, like pulled out all the ones I felt were playable, but I missed the fact that so many of them were knights.
So I attacked here even though they get to block my 2-2 for free because Marvin Fane here. Marvin Fane. Maverin, it's Maverin Fane. Maverin Fane. Makes a token. Do 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 do. Frasca's contempt. Weird. I like Marvin better. I do too. I think I think Marvin's better too, Chad. I'm glad I'm glad you all agree. Alright. Offering to trade these here and make a 2-2. Two -two. They missed they missed a land drop here. We could we could cheese this out. I just like the backup to Kotli being very good. No, it's only one token. It's not one token per attacker. Listen, I just want you to know, Gate, that if we get cast down, that's going to be your fault, and you're going to have to accept the consequences, okay? Just, I just want you to know. Just want you to know that you're lucky we didn't get cast down. Our city hath been blessed, chat. This card seems sweet. Maybe we should probably be on four of these. Like, just like maximizing city's blessing with this. Like, knights and city's blessing maximization does not seem unreasonable. Yeah, Twilight, Twilight Prophet wins the game pretty quickly if it ever goes unchecked. It has, it has in fact been checked. Did I have that typed out already? I did not. I scrolled back up and grabbed him. It's a one mana 4-2 flyer basically with Sanctum Seeker. Yeah, having something like History of Benalia or more flying creatures like Twilight Prophet is probably a decent direction to take it in. Good, good call, Sags. Making a note of that. Going on, Vanir. Yeah, I'm planning to do at least one more standard deck after this. I might do, I might do two more after this. Run extra long. I'm floating around 1800 people, just pretty good numbers. Bad any Twitch called shot. <laughs> like it's not my fault. I warned them. Killing Sanctum Seeker before combat here. Kill it now or forever hold your peace. Champion of Dusk.
That's cute. That's a vampire knight too? Yeah, maybe a couple if we're gonna go go deep in on the knight theme. We've been rubber banding between uh Diamond uh Diamond 1 and Diamond 4. We were at one point today we were one win off of Mythic. It's okay, we'll get there eventually, chat. All right, we're gonna concede to finality next turn, and then we'll take a look at the knight's package. Yeah, that, that's why we're gonna lean into the knight's theme, so we can play history of Benalia. Just play more good cards, basically. Okay, the the naked 2-1 kind of implies we're not getting finality next turn, right? At least in my mind, that's what it seems like. I feel like if you're going to finality me, you don't play a 2-1 out because it can explore after the fact. But maybe they just think they have, like, good enough leftovers that they're playing that out so I don't, like, get chip shots in. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully they're on nothing. Don't attack with Hydra increases. God bless. Yeah, Seeker. Seeker would be lethal if we get to get to combat with it. It feels like they might have a removal spell, though. All right, let's find out. Do 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 She is another Vampire Knight, isn't she? Yeah, maybe we'll try and go up a little bit bigger. Like, these, being a the, a little aggro deck is kind of mediocre in this format, so maybe maybe we want to go a little bit bigger with, like, History and 5 mana Vampires. Trying trying to be, like, mid-range aggro in a soul type format is not where you want to be in life. a discount Dracula oh no oh no don't finality me here play just cast cast Elver secrets and be NBD if five blockers Means they take 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. If they don't have a removal spell, they're dead here. And they're blocking the Lord, which kind of implies they don't have a removal spell. All right, scoreboard. Do I want Argyle's Bloodfast in my deck? I'm gonna cut this stupid 2-1 and put Argyle's Bloodfast in my deck. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Joust is good enough. I think there's enough other four and five mana vampires that are okay. Oh yeah, Joust is not a vampire. He's a zombie knight. Good call. 
Ow. Kind of have a curve here. Let's go one drop, Legion Lieutenant uh, Marvin. Marvin Fain. God, dang it, Beetle. Now that's going to be in my head every time I draw this card. Do 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 do. Marvin Fain. Trade Z's. Trade your three drop for my one drop. Trade Z's. Land War Elves, the busted card chat. Things real good. Notably, they don't have a black land yet here. They could maybe have an overgrown tomb. I wonder if we're supposed to. Okay, so they must have a black source. They're leaving that on top. I unfortunately don't have a removal spell in sight. That's real bad for us. Maybe I should have held my 3-2 until this turn, so that way Marvin Bane could have made a vampire. Wow, did they keep Hostage Shaker without having a Black Source? The greed. Lordy, Lordy. Brick. Pops in my head every week, even when I don't play magic. The opposite of bricks, opponent. The opposite of bricks. I think we're dead. We're just like not beating. Not beating four, four mall drifters. Oh, that's a good one. So you're saying, so you're saying there's a chance. Take a chance on me. Do, 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 do. <laughs> to be fair, the vampire lord has a reused animation. Marvin Fain. Does not like to be taken captive, Marvin Fane. Listen, if your deck can never beat a finality, don't play around a finality. Sometimes, sometimes you can just never beat a finality, and that's okay. That's okay. Your deck, your deck full of your deck full of two two lords, probably never beating finality. Uh, Takatli's a soldier. Unfortunately, not a knight. And every every white deck in this format would start with like Takotli, Takotli plus something else. If uh, Takotli plus history, if it was a knight, it's still a great card. Yep, for sure. For shizzle, I could shizzle. All right, land. So lieutenant plus bloodfast, sanctum seeker attack. I'm gonna attack like this because it trades with their 4 4 crisis, makes a 4 4. It's a shame I don't have a, don't have a cast down here. 
blow them out. We need a sub goal for a Jeff mixtape. All of your favorite songs featured on the Hoagland show. What's going on, McBenne? Thanks for the two thirds of a year. Welcome back. Gosh, what if their hand is just poop, chat? What if what if the only cards in their hand are poop? Or they could have a third crisis and they're just waiting till the druid is incubated. They could have they could have a removal spell. I assume we're gonna see this pop off and like Sanctum Seeker die this turn. Will he will he ever find the Sanctum? Find out all of this and more next time. So contemptful. Bugler needs like 25 plus hits before you consider him. Probably, probably 30 plus, honestly. Come on. Come on. Those are good for us. Those are good for us. Four, eight. This is this is uh this is ascended, right? Yep. Do you have another Doom Blade? If they don't have if they don't have another Doom Blade, Twilight Prophet can take this game over. Maybe maybe I'm supposed to play the Sanctum Seeker out as bait here because they probably kill the Sanctum Seeker like they did last time. But like giving them more turns also gives them more chances to draw removal spells. What problem does this have that deck have that Radiant Destiny solves? Be 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 problem based when building decks and making changes to decks. Say, okay, this deck has this issue and I fix it by making this change. Yeah, you can always find all the decks we played already today in the, in the uh, Stream Decker page here. Everybody, everybody stay calm. Everybody, everybody stay calm. Listen, Vorks, you brought, you brought this bad mojo on us. I hope you're I hope you're pleased with yourself. This is your fault. This is this is your fault. You you wished the 1010 the 1010 crisis down upon us. Why would you why would you put that on us? All right, let's try God, that was a long, it was like just 30 minute, 30 minute match one. I really like the idea of being vampire knights focused. Doesn't untap. I don't know if each creature that died this turn. Maybe I'll keep putting a one, one counter on it. things I do for memes. The things I do for memes. <sighs> Was our last mythic chat. 
It was our last mythic wild card. Oh. I hope. I hope you all appreciate me. So all I'm, all I'm gonna say is I hope you appreciate me. So history, history Benelli is great. Let's be be slightly bigger. Enters the battlefield with a one-one counter for each creature that died this turn. That seems real medium. More Sanctum, less Alendra. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Sanctum's like Reach, basically. Plenty of rare wild cards. Don't even bat an eye at that one. Yeah, I probably need one more land with the higher curve. Uh, yeah, the second Carnage Tyrant. Do I want Sky Marcher or is this a little bit too weak at the bottom end? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rework the mana here in a second. Eighteen black sources, but I'm gonna go up at least one white. Sixteen white for history. It's not that hard with eight eight duels and like unclaimed territory is kind of a duel as well. Is Marvin Thane good enough? I wonder if this is better than the one drop. I put if I put the one drop in. If I put Sky Marcher in. This doesn't this doesn't seem unreasonable. Immortal Sun for the grindy matchups, I like that. It's a way to answer Planeswalkers too, basically. Now I think Vana is pretty good. I want I want more removal. This deck doesn't really have a curve so much as just eight 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 four. Try it. Try it like this. This curves like a brick house. Do do do, do. I think Ethereal Absolution just kind of kind of comes up a little bit short. There's a lot of there's a lot of good enchantment removal in the format, and a card like that generally is only good against control. In addition to control having Mortify, they also don't have any creatures in their graveyard that you want to be exiling. No, I think that's worse than just playing the two one for one Sky Marcher. Sure. I think I'm gonna bottom that like an untapped land somewhere. I'd also like another. I'd also like another white source for if I draw history of Benalia. One two on the play here is real good. Yeah, but I mean, like, 
Uh, what's it called is also pretty good against uh, green black. Uh, Immortal Sun's also fine there to help you grind. Well, I guess green black's less planeswalker focused in the world of Hydrate Crisis. Great, my curve is up and our hand is showing it. Who's ready? Who's ready to draw an uncastable four drop or history finale next turn? I know I am. Alright, I mean that's castable at least. We got that, got that going for us. Can't block, must attack, same thing. They even just have a land here. They get to pump up the Boros Challenger and crack us for six. Aurelia, yep. I added in two lands. Went from 23 to 25. Probably too late. History's gonna pop off next turn. Yeah, we're dead. Huh, my sideboard's kind of crap here, huh? I, I guess I just bring in Moment to Craving, but it's not particularly stellar. Maybe I should have some cast downs in, uh, in my board. Doesn't seem completely unreasonable. Why no Kaya's? Like Kaya's Wrath or the actual Planeswalker Kaya? You, you generally don't play cards that kill all the creatures in your deck that's mostly creatures. Wizard, thank you very much for the two. What's up? I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me employed here. I'm ready to never draw a spell and die with this hand, but... Wait, Siri. Wait. Isn't the GP this weekend modern? Man, people... People are about... Uh, people... There's about to be some sky is falling. I'm... You know what? I'm kind of glad. I'm kind of glad I'm taking a Twitter break. Kinda, kinda glad I'm taking a Twitter break. Yikes! So again, this is something. This is something that you really need to understand if you're a competitive magic player. Competitive magic is a fraction of a fraction of paper magic sales. Paper, paper magic is huge in casual compared to, compared to what it is for competitive stuff. And the the focus on putting all this energy into expensive coverage for paper when they have a good digital product they can focus on i kind of agree with their assessment that it doesn't make sense hey welcome to a live one arc wizard like the, the amount of money it costs to make paper coverage good in relation to how good it is in relation to digital is like, it's kind of like night and day, right? Like places that, like companies like SCG that buy and sell magic cards, like they have to hustle paper, right? Because like that's how they make their money. But like Wizards sells magic cards by promoting arena too, right? I don't know, from, from my understanding, doing proper coverage on the weekend costs, you know, into the five figures, 
like ten, twenty thousand dollars. But it, it it doesn't, Rabbit. And like your your assumption there, I think is is very wrong, just based on the numbers. Like most people who play Paper Magic don't even know Magic coverage exists, much less that they could turn on a website called Twitch and find it. And like, don't get me wrong. Like, I like watching paper coverage for a while too, but like. Compared to like what digital could do, it's just it's kind of like night and day. I wonder what kind of Sphinx of Foresight deck they're playing. They get a lot of looks at whatever they need here. Old we'll Scry three twice. I think they bought them two there. Alright, I think they kept one of those, one of those six cards, one of those five cards. Mono blue with Terramander in it, alright. Hey, Wonder Weasel, well thanks for being here today, hope you're having a good one. See, I actually, I actually don't really agree with that, Donovan. I actually think that Grand Prix coverage had gotten a lot better recently. I think GP coverage in the last year had a huge, a huge uptick in, in the quality that it was happening. Hey, Kamal, thanks for the two months of the tier two level. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Be sure to drop me a line and let me know what deck you'd like to bump up in the month for your, your deck this month, your uh, tier two sub. I mean, it's all about, I would just like everyone to just like, be aware of your biases. The fact that you are in my chat here and you know magic exists on Twitch puts you in a percentage of people that are more invested in magic than most people who play magic. Just, just by virtue of knowing that this exists. Uh, yeah, turn one Sky Marcher attacks for more damage and I kind of want to be aggressive when I'm following it up with uh, Adanto Vanguard. Yeah, I agree. Both all all magic coverage have gotten much better. As CG adjusts their downtime and GP GP had been trying to commentary folks. I mean, do do you do you know what SCG numbers look like? Do, do you know how much money it costs SCG to run their coverage? Or are you just assuming it's cheaper for them? Also, SCG has a very direct reason to sell singles for their game. Like, if Wizards of the Coast changes and promotes Arena, they're still promoting magic, right? They're still promoting magic, which they just care about magic in general, whereas a company like STG explicitly cares about paper magic. Looks like they're just stockish mono bloom. That felt pretty good. I like I like me a 4-4 four, four that draws three cards. <laughs> I agree. I, re I really hope they knock the Mythic Invitational coverage out of the water. There are gonna be there are gonna be a lot of eyes in the Mythic Invitational. It's going to be the, the first major streamed event for this new client. So, it could be, it's going to, going to kind of set the tone and it's going to set expectations. Since it's our first, first Magic's first real venture into esports. I'm bringing my curve down. I'm going to kind of land. That might be greedy. We're on the draw.
The idea of coverage is sponsored pro directly by Watsi or Channel 4. I believe previously Wizards was paying for coverage. Like, why would, why would Channel... So, like, if Channel Fireball wanted to pick up the coverage, Channel Fireball has to ask themselves, are they going to make another $20,000 off adding coverage to the tournament? And the answer is probably no for them. Do you think the stream viewers will be able to see both players' hands when watching Arena? I really hope so. I, I really hope that's going to be the case. Uh, I'm not participating in the arena tournament because Wizards of the Coast does not want to be affiliated with me in any official capacity. Because they are not a fan of my feedback that I give on, on Magic Arena. Seems pretty reasonable. Get to go turn one Legion Landing, turn two to rest, turn three history. It is, that is actually why I talk, talk to them on the phone. Yeah, there's, there's more, there's more details, more details on the call in this, in this Twitter, this Twitter hot mess. Fair, fair warning that thread's a Twitter rabbit hole. That, that thread is a Twitter hole. It's not, it's not pleasant. The arena is new and the first big tournament hasn't even happened. And recently I can't comment on how much SCG spends on coverage, but given the equipment and my experience, I have a... I have a rough estimate. Sure, so you're saying you don't know, but you can guess. It's, I believe magic, magic as a whole, Aaron. Magic, magic as a whole. I have mostly good things to say about Arena, but I'm sure things like my magic online is gambling comments, I'm sure they don't appreciate that either. I mean, I'm sure they, I'm sure they listen to me and like from their point of view, really like why, why do they need to be affiliated with me? Right? Like I'm here, I'm here 50 hours or 40 hours or 60 hours, or however many I'm here a week, whether or not they're officiated, officially affiliated with me or not. Right? Like there's plenty of other people that they can go be officially affiliated with that are like not going to like run them and run them through the mud on stream to a thousand people, 2000 people sometimes when I feel they've stepped in it. I mean, like, obviously I'm associated, I'm associated with magic, like people that turn on the magic section of Twitch that I'm often here. I really hope we get an official spectator mode at some point. I want to run Hoaglandia tournaments and a spectator client would be gas for that. They're going to have drawn like spell pierce here. Rabid Wallaby, I want you to look at how many followers my Twitch channel has. Now I want you to go look at how many subscribers Tolerian Communities College's uh, YouTube has. I want you to compare those two numbers. There is there is a there is a certain point where you are too big to ignore, and from my understanding, they're not a huge fan of him either. He's just literally the biggest. Like, Tolerian Community College, like, has more follow subscribers on YouTube than, like, some of the Hearthstone personalities they pay to bring in. He is, he is massive. Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question... Well, so Jerry Thompson got invited on an objective metric. So they couldn't just single out Jerry, right? Because he stood them up. So like Jerry, like if they like drew objective lines and said like, we're inviting every magic streamer over X viewers or X whatever, I'd probably be over that metric, right?
But it's their thing. They can do whatever they want. They're not required to be objective. They can do as they please. Look at look at Cedric Phillips' response to my post on Twitter. I was I was actually shocked at his response. Cedric Cedric thinks I should have been hush hush and I shouldn't be transparent and talk with the people at my stream about how my sponsorships work. But that's that's how this works for me. That's why people support me is because I'm willing to talk about the things that go on in this stream. This is this is my business and I'm transparent that this is my business and that I have sponsors and I accept and reject sponsors that are good and bad all the time. But that that's not the industry norm. There were there were a bunch of people who I honestly lost respect for who were telling me that I shouldn't be transparent and that if I want to work with wizards and companies like them, I can't do that. And I think that's nonsense. I agree that the way in which I present myself isn't always fantastic and I need to work on that. But I think this idea that there needs to be this level of secrecy and I can't be transparent with what I do with the people is... Yeah, I think that's, I think that's crap. No, I think Mark, Herb Mark Herberholtz is one of the people I have a problem with. Herberholtz said I didn't co the t tow the company line and I wasn't, I was willing to be transparent about what's going on. And he's saying I shouldn't have been. He's saying if you're not, if you're going to be transparent, these companies don't want to work with you. And that's fine. I don't need to work with them then if that's what they want. They weren't having a private conversation with me. I was I was talking to a sponsor about my job and my job is paid for by my bosses. You see that number above my head? There are currently 3,856 people on the advisory board for this stream. And every sponsor I bring in potentially impacts them, especially if that sponsorship makes me change how I manage this. Because these people pay for me to be here No, I said I didn't ask to record it, and you're legally required to ask to record things. Because I felt going in and asking to record it would be like I was operating in bad faith, and I didn't want to be operating in bad faith. I wanted to go in with an open mind and see what they wanted to say. Perfect, Bionic. Will do. Thanks for the support. All right, we beat the gates deck. We ran him down a little bit. So this is a duress matchup. Immortal Sun's not good, even though they're more controlling here. This is probably not great. I think I want some of these mortifies, but maybe not all of them. Talos, thanks for the three month reset. I appreciate that. Yeah, there were a lot, a lot of other people who are in the industry were upset with the way that I handled it in the industry. I play I'm playing Raynad's card game when it comes out. I don't know. I try most card games when they come out. His his card game's supposed to have a different monetization model, right? You like buy things in sets, which seems interesting. Not, not only that, but, like, if they didn't expect me to share what was going on with the people who pay me, like, they should have said, hey, could you could you not talk about this? Because they didn't explicitly ask me to do that, too, right? Like, if they... If they wanted... If they wanted that, they should have asked for it. For starters. And they didn't. And I, I can only assume they're familiar with me, so I, I assumed they were gonna, you know... Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mentioned it a couple of times beforehand. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they genu I'm sure there's people there that genuinely appreciate 
the positive feedback that I give related to magic products. It just, I can't be negative as well. Short time subscriber, keep doing what you do. Well, thank you for the biddies. I appreciate that. Hope you're having a good Friday and a good search your weekend. No, there were other people in the games industry were telling me that I shouldn't have talked about the call. That, that that's unprofessional and not how these things work. You're supposed to be hush-hush and work in secrecy. Uh, Mark Herberholt, who is an old school player who played on the Pro Tour once upon a time, and Cedric Phillips, and more, more enlightening, this is a way if you're not familiar with social media, if you go look at Herberholtz and Cedric's tweets, go look at who liked those, and look at how many people in the, the Magic and Games industry liked their tweets telling me that I should shut my mouth and be quiet, that I shouldn't have communicated what happened. They didn't, they didn't tell me to lie. They just said I explicitly shouldn't have been forthright. So, fairs to call a spade a spade. They didn't say lie. They said just don't be forthright, essentially. Don't talk about it. They, they, they gave me one specific example of, of, a, of something that they were talking about that they didn't like that they felt made me a liability. And the specific example they gave me, they cited a tweet where I said I was disappointed in a change that Arena made. But they were they were upset that I used the word disappointed in relation to Arena. I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even use correct. Yeah, I was like, I, I was kind of, I was like, man. And, and, and all honesty, at the end of the day, I'm glad they were transparent with me. Ruffles, thank you for the Twitch Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome. Um, Because, like, they, they could have very easily, like, done a cop-out, right? Like, anybody who's watched my stream for a long time knows that we get political on stream occasionally, right? And I'm like, I'm like an unapologetic, dirty liberal. And they very easily could have just said, hey, Jeff. We don't want to be associated with political affiliations. But they didn't do that. They like they were upfront and honest with me, and they didn't have to be. I don't need full control, right? I can go, so this fans out and I can click here. So I can do this and then after attackers, before blockers, I can activate this and shoot this. Yeah, so we, we attack with Bana, we shoot the Colossus. If they don't if they don't have another gate to blaze here, I think we're actually winning. Yeah, if you if you have a stop on whatever phase you're in, it stops every time. Up to 31. I'm actually kind of surprised they put Colossus back on top of their deck. That doesn't seem like a very good line. Wow! Y'all ready to give them a history lesson? So put a stop here. Attack with this. Before blockers, shoot one of these. They did not invite Saffron Olive. So, but it wasn't just about streaming, right? Like, Saffron makes a lot of magic content outside of streaming. Yeah, I feel like if they don't have a Gates of Blaze or some way to draw cards in their hands here, they probably shouldn't have put the Colossus back on top of their deck. Because they need something better than that. Vana, Vana plus Twilight Prophet being pretty potent here. Do I just attack, attack with everything? They'll like eat a 2-2, two -two, but then they take a bunch.
an explosion worry here? I don't think so. This is, they've only got four, five, six, seven, eight mana. Yeah, they're dead, dead to the double history all of a sudden. All right, so we ended up like two and two or three and two. I think, I don't know that this build is perfect, but like that last game was a good example of like why you should just play history of Benalia, right? Like, while, while it's not, it's fun to be on theme, you need to just make sure you put good, powerful cards that are individually good in your deck. And one of the things that's kind of a theme over and over again in this format is the Wild Growth Walker decks. Here's to keeping you going. I love the way you handle your channel. And that's why, well, Terrace, thank you for the half a year. And thanks for shipping your Prime back wagon this month. Prime, Prime definitely pays my bills these days. So thank you. Um, the, a recurring theme with some of these submitted decks we've been changing is... You can't really be middling in between aggro and mid-range in this format. The Wild Growth Walker decks just puts you in a little box in the ground, and it's no good. So what we did here was, with History and Twilight Prophet especially, we pulled up a little bit, especially into these five drops for more card advantage, so we could be a little bit evasive and draw more cards, while also having some cards to pressure other people out of the game. This is, yeah, this is, this deck is as much knights as it is vampires. I, I agree. So I think, I think basically if your deck isn't as fast as mono red, you probably need to pull up bigger in this format into more mid rangey because if you're caught in between mid range and like what mono red does, you just can't go toe to toe with Saltai and that's not good enough in the format. All right, we have another black white deck up next. In three color decks, how do you balance between shocks, checks, and basic lands? It's actually an article I, I want to write for this format. The answer is it depends on what ca what colored symbols are in your spells that you're trying to cast and how aggressive your deck is. So in an aggro deck, you probably just want to max out on shock lands, but in control and mid-range decks, you probably only want like nine or ten because taking too much damage from your lands is a real liability. Black, white, spell. Spawn. Oh, did I not? Spawn got cut. Bumped up. Did I not load spawn up? Gosh. Yesterday yesterday was a long day. I must have forgotten to load black white spawn up. Let's get that here real quick. Thankfully, Arena imports real quickly. Yeah, I'm taking tomorrow off and possibly Sunday off as well, but we're going to do a long day today. I think I'm going to do two more decks here tonight. I'm gonna name this Black White Skies actually instead of Black White Spawn because it's a bunch. It's a variety of flying creatures. I don't want to. I don't want to undersell Seraph of the Scales by not including her in the in the name of the deck. Yeah, this build. This build looks sweet. Uh, before we start. Well, thanks, C4. I'm I'm not down about it. I'm just I'm just talking about it. That's just my voice. I know people people think I sound angry because I'm loud. I'm really not at this point. I was a little bit frustrated last week when it happened, but at this point, it's just like you know what? The community's got my back. We we a okay. I think not having four duress on our sideboard is hot nonsense. So I'm gonna fix that real quick. Honestly, one of my wish lists for Arena is I think it's kind of crummy that Arena doesn't do a generic text import. I really wish it should. Magic Online does a generic text import, and that would be ideal. I'm going to clean up the sideboard here a little bit and get four duresses in. All right. It looks like, yeah, it did Immortal. Sorry, I missed it. I was, I was doing it on another window. Thank you for that. Those horses have killed gates, yep. See, I'm gonna put an Eldest Reborn in here over the fourth contempt. Eventually, eventually we'll get this down. So the the deck editor at MTGO is actually pretty good. 
in my opinion, the only piece of software I... The only card game I've played that has a better deck editor than MTGO is probably Artifact. Artifact's deck editor is actually really slick. Ever thought of making YouTube content akin to The Professor's? It's incredibly difficult to gain traction doing YouTube content. I already have a lot of traction on Twitch, so it doesn't really make sense for me to reinvest my time into 